So the annual patches and updates have already gone out for Modern Warfare 3's most efficient ways to level up your weapons. But while we see that happen every single year, nerfs to the easiest ways to rank up your weapons, today we're running down a new and updated version to our list here of the most efficient ways to rank up your weaponry, which in some ways this might be at the least an evenly dispersed method or maybe even faster depends on which way you go and how you want to use this but today we're running down the updated ways to rank up your weapons in modern warfare 3 as fast and efficiently as possible as we go along drop your thoughts down below drop a like on the video if you find it at all insightful and make sure to subscribe to stay there with all things modern warfare 3 for more guides tutorials news best classes reviews and more i'd love to have in the community final note check out g fuel for 30 percent off your entire order with code espresso but more on that later and make sure to follow over on twitch as well to chat with us live as we get back into the swing of things there anyways for now let's talk about ranking up your weapons as fast as possible in Modern Warfare 3 after the update. So the previous best and most efficient way that I would have said was the exfil method in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. It was chilled, didn't have skill-based matchmaking, didn't have any sort of PvP element to it, and at launch you could get weapons up to like level 20 in one quick run of like 25 minutes of farming after you got set up. Now that's not so much the case. Soon after we published our guide, I want to say like 24 hours later, there was what felt like an XP cap introduced, meaning you could only get, I'd say around like 13 levels per match and that was a hard ceiling at that. You'd see it taper off, you'd go multiple exfils without even feeling like you progressed at all, and that was the most you could achieve. Then, just the other day, they introduced the change to the exfil locations that was drastically undercutting the number of zombies that would actually spawn when you called that exfil chopper in. Especially late game, you'd end up seeing that be something where it brought around 50 plus per spawn, like 50 to 100, and then you'd clear those out, more would keep spawning, so it would just be an absolute farm to end up getting that XP. Now, you don't see nearly as many. I want to say you probably see at max, maybe like 20, 30 zombies, again, at the latest time in the expel countdown. So while they said that was to improve stability because people were cheesing exploits for sentry guns and everything like that to get like 20 of those at an expel location, I think the easier method would have been to just get rid of the sentry guns, but I also think that was kind of their disguise to end up lowering the amount of XP yield for the expels themselves. But anyways, beyond that now, the new and best easiest way still I think comes in zombies, this coming with the spore contract, where that contract tasks you with ending up destroying six spores and it's very easy, but it is something that there will be a handful of those around the map. It's not like the only three exfil zones you end up getting in most games. There'll be more than three spore contracts, mostly at a time. Plus there'll be more as time goes on. As people complete contracts, they'll refresh, more will come up and more spore contracts will be available. But to do this, you have to activate the contract, then grab the inhibitor device and throw those down at a few spores. From there, that will then spawn zombies around it trying to protect the spores, and the nice part is, well, they don't stop spawning. They are continual spawns here until you end up destroying those spores, which you don't have to destroy the spores. So you can end up doing this the entire round if you'd like. I think I found like activating or throwing inhibitors on three to four spores was the sweet spot to have it active all at once because one spore didn't yield a whole ton of zombie spawns, two yielded a bit more, but three to four seemed like while you got more, it might've been that cap. It also makes it easier to keep an eye on those spores and the inhibitor devices because the only thing that I will say with this method is that you have to keep an eye out for that because it sometimes seemed like either the inhibitor devices would either die out or they'll get attacked by zombies. But I had a few times happen where I had to go and place another inhibitor device on the spore because it regened back to its normal health and everything that went along with that. So kind of a bummer you have to keep an eye on that, but also not the biggest deal because if you end up doing three to four active, they give you eight inhibitors per contract. So you should have a few to spare that you could just end up placing it down again and going back to your business. Now it doesn't grant you as many zombies nearly as much in regards to the exfil farming method, especially near the end. But at the same time, there is no 30 to 60 second rollover of like dead time between exfil methods. So in a way, it might be pretty close to the number of like mid game exfils, not the late game exfils again, because you'd have like 50 plus zombies at a single time. But it still is a way to keep continuously shooting at zombies and gaining XP relatively quickly. Another method found by OP Marked is one that's entirely hands off. I'll link his video down there in the description below because it is absolutely worth a view here on this. I'm just going to let you know that it is out there, but I don't know if I'd call this a glitch or an exploit, but it does work incredibly fast and it's entirely hands off. You need to finish act one and do the exfil mission for this, where you can then grab a monkey bomb, sentry gun from the median threat zone, and then the circuit boards for the automated sentry. For this method, you got to throw down the sentry, jump on top of it, put the monkey bomb on top of the sentry gun, and then it sort of glitches out where the bomb doesn't 
doesn't go off but it still has those pulling properties on the zombies so they all come to one location and that's where the automated sentry comes into play where it just takes them all out all again coming to that one spot funneling to the sentry so it's an afk method to farming levels again i'll leave the link down below to his guide he absolutely deserves the view on that for finding that but wanted to inform you that that is indeed another way that's out there fast and an afk method you can do but beyond that that's where we get back to our normal methods of play that have not been touched now i personally still like the zombies methods here and the spore farming and everything because it's pve it doesn't have any skill-based matchmaking or crazy matchmaking parameters with it it's just way more chill i can throw on music and kind of just do the mind numbing grind here with it and it still goes relatively fast but once you get back into those sort of standard levels of play, I'd still say the best way to do it is the kill confirm method firstly, where you have your weapon of choice that you want to rank up, your demolition vest for that resupply effect and the decoy grenades or the engineer vest where you have two right out of the gate if you want to play like hardcore, you think you're going to die quickly. But for this, you want to just throw decoy grenades and end up collecting as many tags as possible. Whenever you get a decoy assist, somebody ends up getting a kill on your team on somebody that was in the vicinity of that decoy grenade, you'll get the decoy assist XP credited to that weapon that you have out that you're ranking up anytime you get a kill you'll get credit for that towards the weapon you're trying to rank up anytime you end up confirming or denying tags you end up getting xp to your weapon that you want to rank up and of course if you have all of this with double xp as you should i think that should be a given probably should have started the video with that if you have double xp on top of all that you're going to be zooming through stuff not only that but if you're collecting tags you're also going to really increase your win loss ratio i think when i was doing this my win loss ratio was like a 2.6 or like a 2.8 or something like that so you win a lot of matches beyond that hardcore i'd say is just the base blanket method because you get xp for everything one shot one kills all those medals that you get that you might not otherwise get those give you xp and count towards your weapon progression that you want to rank up so again very important you end up doing that if you don't want to jump into just regular kill confirmed any mode in hardcore is good war is really good but again as we mentioned i think it's very sweaty it's just very good because you can elongate that time to be about like 25 to 26 to 30 minutes depending on if you can end up taking the game to full time and overtime on both ends of those matches that's something that just gives you so much time in game to grind out get kills play the objective and of course as always ranking up your weapon xp by doing all of that now it is something that if you play solo i probably wouldn't recommend this because you are going to stack up against a couple of different full squads and parties as i did maybe not a couple of days now after launch but especially near launch it was absolutely something that was sweat city but anyways that's a good way to do it as well and then invasion as we talked about last year it was absolutely the way to rank up weapons this year I feel like there's less bot spawns. I feel like there's way too much open space in the maps that we have on offer right now that it was still effective, but I think also not as time efficient. Like once you started to get into the swing of things here, you could farm bots and get that same sort of bugged XP that you did last year, where it almost counted the exact same as regular players. If you ended up getting those 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 31 and up bonuses, where it counted those exponential increases in XP for those milestone kills, the same as it would be on a regular player, but you're doing it all on bots. While that's incredible, I feel like you're just wasting too much time going back and forth from your base to behind enemy lines. And then if you die anywhere along the way, it's like another minute to try and run up to that point again. So it's super fast when you can get there. But again, I don't think it's the most time efficient. But anyways, that's my updated list here now for the best ways to rank up your weapons here after the update in Modern Warfare 3. So that's what we're going to call it. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you guys think of this here? What do you think of the best ways to rank up your weapons? If you find anything more efficient that you'd like to share down below, feel free to if that's the case. Before we have everything up, make sure you check out my friends over at G Fuel. Code Espresso can get you 30% off your entire order here. To fuel your COD grind this COD season for weapon ranks, camos, whatever the case, G Fuel's got you covered. To me, they're like my cup of coffee in the morning. Get my day started with them. Get my productivity going. For me, I love the flavors of the Morbius Nectarine flavor, Strawberry Banana, Hype Sauce, Pink Trip, My Team Carnage, our flavor hog juice absolutely love all those so if you guys want to check those out or more link in the description below and code espresso can you 30 percent off your entire order but for now that's what we're gonna call it so again drop your thoughts down below if you enjoyed the video if you found it at all insightful do me a favor and drop a like on it and if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing running all things modern warfare 3 guides tutorials news class setups reviews all that kind of stuff we got you covered here on the channel and i'd love to have in the community but for now thanks so much for watching my name is espresso i'll see you later take care and peace